What's up, everybody? Welcome back. John Levesque here. Today, I am joined by Carl Cookson, a.k.a. Cookie, as my boy Chris always calls him. Carl, how you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you, John. Hey, nice to see you. You too, you too. Uh, I am here on the eve of the election and uh, just with trepidation awaiting all of the results. It's tight. It's tighter than we all want it to be. So, you know, I'm yeah. just doom scrolling, waiting to see what happens here. Well, how about you? Yeah, how are you doing? You... We're, we're very good, thank you. Yeah, we're all waiting for that election result as well because it has an impact across the whole world, doesn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, well, hey, Carl is here today to show us something amazing. I saw him make a post about this. Apparently, correct me now if I am off on this, but what you have done is you have done the opposite of what we have done where we have taken a, where you can take it, write a Visio diagram and turn that into a flow. You have created the ability to take a already made flow and produce a Visio diagram. Is that right? Correct. Awesome. Correct. That is something that so many people have been asking for. And, uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you. Carl, do me a favor, since the audience is just meeting you, go ahead and take a minute, talk about yourself. What do you do? Where are you from? all that goodness, and then feel free to go ahead and take it away. Thanks, John. Um, I'm Carl Cookson. I work for Avenard in the UK as a, a dynamics and power platform implementer. So I tend to get involved with a lot of enterprise clients and implement their solutions. But as a side to all of that, I try and create tools for the community to help them out and do things that I want dynamics and, and power platform to do. Um, and that uh, Microsoft hasn't got around to yet generally and um, and they 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 um, provide us a lot of functionality that we can um, express ourselves with and get into grips with that and generate things that um, not normally done in the application awesome so awesome. what I wanted to show you today was was my tools uh, uh, using the XRM toolbox and if people don't know the XRM toolbox it's been around for uh, a long time built by Tangai Tuzard, um, um, an MVP for 11 years, that, that built it um, based on for being able to do bits within the application and make your life easier, whether it's trying to change attributes, whether it's importing data, whether it's trying to um, migrate data or do f other things that um, are not available out of the box. Tangai put a load of tools together and has now open sourced that toolbox to allow other people to add tools. And famously, the Fetch XML Builder, which is Jonas Rapp's tool, sits in there. And he, it's one of the mainly used um, applications to allow you to easily um, build the Fetch XML. If you want to go a little bit further than the standard uh, flow generated um, uh, lists or to do things within the Power Apps itself. Awesome. This is great. I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Yash did a video with me showing how to do many to many relationships, triggering yeah. off those in CDS using the XRM toolkit. And, uh, and, and so pretty cool. I like the history lesson. That's something we didn't talk about. What's the origination? What's this tool? And so good context. Thank you for that. That's not, not a problem. So let me share my screen. So XRM toolbox, um, um, what I want to show you is, is you know, when you download it for xrmtoolbox.com, install it. Um, what you do first need to do is connect, and you'll see that I've got various connections here. But what these are doing is, is basically allowing you to create a connection to your instance. Um, these are the, the URL that you would generally use to connect to um, the Power Platform um, uh, CDS instance. So um, I know that mine is, uh, is here. Um, and then I can go and make sure you get the uh, extension right for the for whichever region you're in. And then we put in start to put in the, the credential details. Um, and the password. And it's as easy as that. Um, and if it's, it's connecting to your common data service, you give it a name um, and we're, away we go and we're connected. Nice. Um, there is a, other ways to connect. Um, uh, whether it depending on the security of your system and your configuration, but you can go with client ID and application ID or, or um, uh, other th things and the more yeah. advanced ways. Some added security anyway. layers. Yeah, definitely. And it cool. depends on what, what's been locked down in your environment. I'm using demo environments and trials to yeah. show this stuff off. So it's very much a um, simple, straightforward process for me. Awesome. 
but that's all documented within the XUM toolbox um, site. Um, and you'll see here I've got a recently used tools so for the so what we're going to have a look at today was this um, flow visio builder. Um, and if I just drag in um, my flow and show you the flow that we're going to look at today. Um, I've done demos previously where I've connected my Alexa device to field service nice. to allow people to create work orders um, and ask for a boiler service effectively. Um, so this is a triggered flow using, um, um, uh, let me go to the edit, basically an HTTP trigger followed by a lot of things that are happening okay. and uh, uh, doing lots of things. So you can see here, some of this is quite convoluted and complex. And if we were documented this with, um, wrong one, if we were documenting this with um, uh, the normal route, you'd be starting to take screenshots at this point and, yep. and doing copy and paste, et cetera. And you can see that when, when we get into these complicated areas, it, it starts to get very, very uh, convoluted and tricky. Well, yeah, and then well, suddenly thought, as we're taking those screenshots, our, our boxes become about that big, you know? <laughs> Correct. And, and that was part of the problem, I think, is, is that um, we've seen, you know, a chap showed me on Facebook of it filled the whole wall, his documentation. Um, and, and this is the point of, of bringing it into Visio is that you can then start to um, publish these to um, your clients or your customers, you know, taking a snapshot in time and moving forward rather than copying the flow and making sure that what you delivered was what what is still there in production or whatever other environment. And it, you know, Visio is a great way of doing that. It's awesome. And it's common throughout the, the environment. You don't need to give someone access to your environment to, to be able to, to see what it's all about. So this is our flow within um, uh, Power Automate. Um, and I can then go and click on um, the same flow within um, Alexa. And to say that these are the flows that are, are in solutions. So they are stored within the, the common data service. There, are, there is another route we can show you later to connect to the flows that are outside that environment if you're using just the standard default environment or you've not put it into flows, et cetera. I'll show you that a little later. And all I need to do now is give it a file name and I'll stay on my Dex, desktop. Um, save the file and uh, hit uh, Create Visio. And I've generated 52 actions. Just like that. Just like that. Wow. Um, and if if I just drag in the um, video screen, it's on my other screen, excuse me. Um, you'll still, you'll now see the the version that's in video. So if you wow. remember, it started with um, the each of the, the HTTP requests, initializing the variables. Scope's so a bit funny. Let me let me stop you real really fast. Did I just notice though, like in your HTTP calls there, like it's actually pulling the JSON as well? Yeah, and that's the that's the thing I've tried to do with all of these things. You know, you know it's JSON in the background. That, that's what we were showing on the other screen. That JSON is just a big text string, and each of these components are are, are specific to the action. Yep. So um, in a HTTP request, there is a JSON body and maybe that's relevant maybe it's not but uh, you know it's there and i pull it back and then it's up to you to go and tweak it if you don't need it or everything else that's there wow if you go into other areas um i've just basically looked at the the json and made a decision about what would be relevant for each of the um action type so initialize variable you just need to name the name and the string and the, the, the type that's all you need to know and it, and it goes on from there Wow, that's so awesome. I love that because now it's not, it's more than documentation, it's actionable. It's something that somebody could take and use and replicate very easily just from a document without having access to someone's account, without having access to yes. someone's flows. That's exactly, oh man, that's so good. Um, and there's a few other things, things that are a bit special. Scope, for example, um, I put a, in, um, a start and end block for the scope okay rather than putting in you know you collapse it within power automate and expand it and it, and it was just a matter of, of of bringing it all down nice um you can see this is a an if a select if action um select action i think it is uh, um, so we've got the we've got the two the paths that are happening here nice 
and we've got the basically a, a corresponding closure of that if action when it all comes back together. Um, yeah. And further down, just to show you that switch that we saw earlier, um, sometimes I haven't quite worked this out yet. It's still a, a, a um, work in progress, but if I, you can see that it's overlapping and not quite sorted itself out. Um, but if I go to uh, view, uh, no, design, excuse me, the layout page, and just um, give it a chance to resort itself out. You can see that, that that if there was a yes and no, and then the switch is then um, documented fully, and then wow. we go back down to the bottom of the end of the if, effectively. Man, this is amazing. This is awesome, and I I love the fact like. I just want to call out the level of attention to detail there in actually trying to recognize what should be displayed per step and saying, oh yeah, variable, we just need this. Uh, obviously in HTTP, the body would matter. I love this. This is, this is fantastic, man. Like really, really nice work. Thank you. I, and and that, that's a work in progress as well. You know, I, I've tried to um, cover as many bases as I know but, um, and I'm also when I'm using when you're using the application, I'm logging the fact that if I can't, if I don't know about an action, I'll log the type of action and um, the the name of the action, so I can then get told what to go and add to the code, because each of these are are pretty special, um, and I've stolen all the logos from Power Automate. So you know, building up these individual boxes takes about uh, ten minutes for me to do, but yeah. it's just to getting through them because there's. 400 connectors now. I can't remember. Can't think about plus. how many. I think we're at like 407 yeah. or something crazy now. I can't imagine the amount of types of actions there are. Because if, if I looked at the, the biggest one I did was the uh, update the CDS current environment. That The list of actions on that alone was just fast. Yeah, I think I just, that, that Teams, SharePoint, yeah. Outlook, those four have just crazy amounts of yeah. actions. Yeah, so I'm slowly building my way through adding them going off the the stats that i'm seeing about people that are you you know not complaining because if if it doesn't know it will just create a white box with the with the json in gotcha. but um if it if it couldn't render it properly then it, i get notified and then go away and spend a little time fixing it wow so you have a system built in where if it doesn't recognize something you'll know about it Yes, correct. Wow. Correct. Okay, cool. Man, this is amazing. I am I am nerding out right now. I, I'm amazed <laughs> that you've built this. This is super cool. Yeah, well, for me, it's, it's one of those things that, that um, as a consultant, there's, there's two areas that you tend to get forgotten about. Testing is one and documentation. And documentation yeah. for me tends to be, um, what have you done? And in back in the, the old pro code days, you just picked, there's your source code um, and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, the HTML page or whatever it is that you've produced. But with with Flow, with Power Automate, you know, what have you done? And it's particularly, what did you deliver versus what's happened to it in three or four iterations time? We need to know and, and, and as a consultant, we need to understand. Definitely. And this hopefully saves a bit of time doing that because um, where I've done it in the past is we, we were building these videos up by hand and, and, and cranking through them, creating the, not going to the detail normally that's in here, but certainly giving you an overview of what's there and what's a, what it's about. Love it. And I, lo I love how it calls into managed solutions as well. Like so simply that checkbox that you showed like, oh, is this managed? Is it not? And, uh, and being able to call into those solutions, I think is, is another thing that should be called out. That is not an easy feat to, to accomplish. That is not something that like even us ourselves inside simply do is reach into solutions. So the fact that that's accomplished so uh, with such finesse here, I think is another thing that should should absolutely be mentioned. Very good, yes. I, I do agree, you know, there's, um, I'll just show you that when we go to the the, the Flow API, so okay. um, as well, because that's the other side of it. Um, if um, with the only problem with the flow API is that you need to set up the client service and tenant and environments and there's, there's blog posts how to do this. Okay. And um, but effectively, once I do that, it will then prompt me with, with the standard OAuth credentials. So you're basically allowing it to connect to those to that API in, in your stead. Yep. Effectively. Uh, 
click the right one. And so just a warning, some of you at home watching, you won't be able to do this. Um, you will need admin permission to be able to achieve this in some places, but uh, I, I recommend you try. Follow the blog post, give it a shot, see if you can manage your API flows in the same way, or if not, then go ahead and start using solutions. A couple ways you can work around that. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's, it's, it's you've got to start getting friendly with your IT department like, yeah. Yeah, like you should and get, get them to do it for you. And, it, and it, it's the same interface then, but obviously I've not got that many. So um, it's just a matter of um, changing the file name and then uh, away we go. Because it saves it as the same um, object within the, within um, the, the, this, wherever it's stored within the flow um, via the API. Okay. So then we start to get the different uh, uh, flow, which is a very simple one. Uh, you got to pull it very on the screen, simple. I think. Oh, there it yeah, is. Cool. There you go. Perfect. Just very simple that one. Nice. It's just to prove a point, really. Yeah. Because the, the the scheme is still there. It's still available, and it's just that detail that I then churn through to get the the property, etc. Out of. Man, awesome! This is so cool. Uh, wow. I I still can't believe like so. It's funny because you know the Visio team has been talking about this functionality for some time. It's been something that people have asked for. It's something that they said is coming. There has I haven't seen any firm dates. And so, man, I just got to say, I love that you went and made it happen. Like you needed something and you created it. And even more than that now, sharing it so openly with the community is super rad. And I think, you know, that brings me to the main point, Carl, uh, you'll, you'll give me all the links so I can put them all down in the description sure. and everybody can yeah. go ahead and grab and start testing this out. Um, I, I think you guys at home start to use this, like make your flows into Visios, share them that way. And I think I'll, I'll do a shameless plug. We have the flow cookbook in the flow community. If you want to begin to export flows and also share documentation with them, this is a very simple way to accomplish that. So you can begin to share some of the goodness you are creating too. leverage the goodness Carl's creating to share the goodness you are creating, right? Right, definitely. And if you could give me a heads up when my tour becomes redundant, I'll be glad because I'm going to stop maintaining it. Yes, yeah. uh, I'll tell you what, that, <laughs> we can talk about that for sure. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> definitely. I will keep my ear to the ground to find out if when, if and when the Visio team is going to going to bring this as official functionality. Good. Thank you. Cool. OK, so, hey, thank you, Carl, for being here, man, and showing this awesome tech. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you for having me, John. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. You guys at home, go ahead and get connected with Carl. His Twitter will be down in the description. His link here to the XRM toolbox with, with this tool will be linked. Carl, do you have a blog or a YouTube channel or other places that people can get connected with you? Yeah, just Twitter will be a start at LinkedIn365 okay. and go awesome. from there. All right, awesome. Check for those links down in the description. Get connected with Carl. Click like, click subscribe so that you don't miss another video. That's it from me. See you in the next one.